Nearly 150 scholars and former diplomats from across the world have signed an open letter urging China's President Xi Jinping to immediately release two Canadians detained amid a worsening dispute between Beijing and Ottawa. Entrepreneur Michael Spavor and former diplomat Michael Kovrig were detained in December, shortly after Canada arrested a Huawei executive at the request of the United States. Guy Saint Jacques was Canada's ambassador to China from 2012 to 16, and he joins us now from Montreal. Guy Saint Jacques, welcome. So, what's the strength of the case against these two Canadians? Well, I think it's not very strong because, in fact, it's something that uh, I have seen when I was ambassador back in August 2014. We arrested a Chinese national, Mr. Subin, in Vancouver at the request of the United States. <clears throat> they had uh, sent an extradition request. And a week later, uh, two Canadians, Kevin and Julia Garrett, were arrested. And then the Chinese started to uh, uh, talk of uh, uh, further repercussions. And they, they want, it was clear that they wanted to organize uh, a swap. And so this time, what we are seeing is something very similar. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's part of the uh, uh, measures that they want to, uh, they are taking to put pressure on Canada. Mm. So how would you describe this Chinese action in arresting these men? Well, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, it, uh, in my view, it contravenes international law, especially in the case of Michael Kovrig, because according to the uh, Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, a diplomat, of course, enjoys uh, uh, diplomatic immunity while he is posted, but this uh, continues afterwards. There is this notion in Article 39 of residual diplomatic immunity. And so you are not supposed to be questioned later on uh, after you have finished uh, your posting on what you did when you were a diplomat. And China is creating a very uh, dangerous precedent that could come back to haunt them in the future. Mm. So how would you describe the suggestion that these men had been involved in anything nefarious and, and how can you be sure that they weren't? Well, uh, what we have learned following the uh, second visit that uh, Ambassador McCallum was allowed to, uh, to make to uh, Michael Kovrig, uh, Mr. Kovrig said that he is questioned only on the time uh, he worked at the embassy from 2014 to 2016. And uh, again, uh, it's uh, what I see now is the same thing that happened uh, back in 2014. In my view, uh, China keeps list of nationals of all countries. I think this could happen to Australia if at some point you, you get on the wrong side of China. And therefore, I, I see this as uh, totally uh, political in nature. Mm. So clearly this was a reprisal against Canada for the arrest of the Huawei executive? Uh, exactly. And in this case, of course, Huawei, as you know, is one of the flagship uh, of uh, China industry, a company that uh, Xi Jinping uh, wants to, uh, it wants to, he wants to replicate its success. Uh, but also uh, the personalities involved uh, are part of what I would call the, uh, the Chinese royalty. Uh, the father of Mrs. Meng, uh, who has been arrested in Vancouver, is Mr. Uh, Ren Zhangfei. He is very well connected in Beijing. And that's why, that may explain why there's so much pressure being put on Canada right now. So do you believe the Canadian government had reasonable grounds to detain the Huawei executive? Well, uh, under our extradition treaty with the US, we had no choice. And in fact, it's uh, something that we, if we could, we would have liked to avoid. But again, uh, Canada is a country governed by the rule of law, so we have no choice but to uh, go through the legal process. Um, of course, Mrs. Mang is very well treated. In the meantime, Michael Kovic and Michael Spaver don't have access to a lawyer. They are kept uh, in isolation. The lights are kept down uh, 24 hours uh, a day in their room. There's a Chinese minder in the room at all time, and they are subject to lengthy uh, interrogation sessions every day. So if, as you say, this is clearly a reprisal uh, for the arrest of the Huawei executive, is the, um, if, that, if that's the case, presumably this situation could be diffused if the Canadians gave back the Huawei executive to China. Is there uh, any, um, as far as you're concerned, should the uh, ca Canadians' countenance going down that path at all or not? Well, that would be uh, impossible because, again, you know, we are bound by the extradition treaty with uh, uh, 
uh, with the U.S. <clears throat> in fact, the U.S. has until January 30th to deliver the uh, evidence that they have in this case, uh, and the next uh, uh, hearing will be on February 6th. So I suspect that uh, we will uh, th th this the case will proceed. If by miracle we don't get the uh, paperwork from the U.S., then of course. Uh, under the terms of the extradition treaty, we would, we would be able to release uh, Mrs. Monk, but I don't expect this. So just how concerned are you for the welfare of those two Canadian men in China if this extradition does actually proceed? Well, uh, I'm very concerned because according to the uh, new national security law that was adopted uh, back in 2015, they can be detained for up uh, to six months in these uh, conditions with no access to a lawyer, going through those daily uh, interrogation sessions. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, their interrogators will put as much pressure as possible to try to have them uh, to crack down and to confess to anything. So uh, I have worked with Michael Kovrig for two years. He is a first class uh, individual and uh, I have a lot of sympathy for what he is going through right now. Mm. And so you were in China as the Canadian ambassador to China. Give us an idea of uh, what state you believe uh, democracy and freedom is uh, in China at the moment. Because we've, we've, I mean, we saw China host the Olympic Games. Uh, it seemed to be like embracing a more open society. But what, what is it in reality? Well, uh, you know, it's true that uh, in uh, economic terms, there has been huge progress in China. Uh, more than 700 million people have been lifted out of uh, poverty. So on that front, things are going well. The, the standard of living is, uh, is going up all the time. <clears throat> but uh, since uh, President Xi Jinping came to power back in November 2012, there has been a major uh, crackdown on freedom of expression. There are uh, additional controls that have been put in place on social media in China. We have heard about the situation in Xinjiang, where uh, probably around a million uh, Uyghur people have been put into uh, detention camps. So overall, the situation is, uh, is not very good. Yeah. OK, we'll leave it there for the moment. Guy and Jacques, thanks so much for talking to us from Montreal. Thank you and have a good day. To Sport Now and Gold.